The Babylonians are here welcoming us into the ancient era with a trade treaty proposal. Unfortunately, their delegation who is offering the proposal has come with drawn swords and are immediately charging at our scouts. So we are going to deal with this very first battle here in front of us. The goals of these fights, so the attacker has to be able to capture the defender's flag or one side has to have all of their units eliminated. As the defender, that means that we will be able to hold up onto this defensive terrain. And even though our units are evenly matched, we should be able to come out well ahead. So we are going to deploy right onto our flag here. The way that battles work in humankind, I think, is incredibly intelligent. So when two armies clash, you have units kind of stacked together into armies. And then when they actually clash, such as here, a wider battlefield zone opens up around them. And then you go into kind of a micromanaging your units within that battle. And so here we get to play multiple rounds within one single turn to kind of represent the different tactics being employed in the battle. We're just going to defend here on the flag. They attacked us. It is entirely on them to make things happen. They are now incredibly weakened because they have been attacking uphill. Terrain is incredibly pivotal especially in the early eras and now we're ready to just charge down the hill and finish them off being able to put them back at least one scout unit feels pretty good because we entered this age at a very low population if you have kind of a surplus population in terms of your tribe then you can convert those guys over into population in your capital city which by the way we should go ahead and found let us see here one of your outposts can be turned into a city be able to make memphis capital of our egyptian empire now it is a little bit awkward to refer to empires based on their cultures because your culture is going to change every single era but for now we are the egyptians i will probably refer to people mostly by their colors to avoid um being out of date in terms of what culture they actually are and now we will look at their trade treaty <laughs> <laughs> uh trade treaty do we want to trade the luxuries with the babylonians i suppose so we're not really in a position to uh be hostile to them yes i cannot we'll, dispute we'll take the this. benefit in that they attacked us so this could potentially oh, help us start well a war being able to start wars with your opponents it always depends on your uh nation's war support so being able to have grievances that you the book of grudges if you're a warhammer fan um grievances against your opponents will allow you to be able to start wars more easily and legally though if you want to have a uh, a traitorous war and just stab them in the back you can do that as well now we really liked this position though there was there was an outpost i remember uh somewhere up here though it's going to cost us too much influence to be able to build in this area right now found this outpost for 10. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. seems seems like excellent excellent position now these scouts have been damaged so they are going to want to return home is this like a cliff they can't go down that cliff that might be a cliff <laughs> so we're going to run back to our friendly territory where our units will automatically be able to heal turn over turn and now in memphis we can get started on our very first improvement. So here in the beginning of the game, we don't have too much available to us. Uh, we have to decide if we want to get more food, more production, more influence, or potentially the Egyptian pyramid that will allow us to um, get even more production. I do like the idea of uh, bringing in the pyramid somewhat early, but I would like to build it I'm kind of taking a, a long range thought on what this city is going to look like. And I think we want to go for food first. Why do you guys get these? These districts are very poor because the, um, I should explain how the districts work. So when you build a district, you get it placed down. It has to be connected to something that you have already built. And then the different districts are offering you production improvements on their tiles, but you see here a bar resource exploitation 
And so all of these hexes with their little symbols show what kind of resources they just naturally produce. And anything adjacent to a new district is exploitable. So if we build here, we can then start exploiting all of these adjacent spaces for additional food to be able to feed the uh, starving bellies over in Memphis, which we want to do. We want to be able to get over to kind of these coastal plains with additional food. If we build here, we remove the forest, which means we will actually lose some production, which would be similar over here. Um, I think that we still do it to be able to get our food production a little higher, be able to get more population alive and well in Memphis. But then we are definitely going to want to go Maker's Quarters and Pyramids out here, as I envision us extending some production improvements in this area towards the mountains especially the mountains give incredible production without even having to be improved and now we also get to pick our first technologies the tech tree is enormous it is sectioned off here by the different eras so right now we're only concerned with these first few and what do we want to be able to use well our unique unit depends on having horses improved and then the wheel researched as well so it is actually kind of a ways away. Archers is a big first step as well. And then the artisan's quarters here will allow us to begin exploiting the natural resources or the um, the luxury resources that we have under our control. Yeah, so I kind of see these first three all being what we want to take initially. We're going to go for calendar. Let's see, what would it cost? This can be claimed with 20 influence. And there was an excellent spot somewhere around this river bend that we're gonna wanna take to kind of forward settle Babylon over here. Let them know that uh, they cannot encroach on us. We wanna have this space for our capital. And now these men want to come up over this cliffs because we saw, we spied another incredible um, city opportunity, or. It'll be outpost now. It'll be a city eventually, maybe. One of these spaces I wanted to make into another city because it is not their, just a bunch their opening tiles were just so good. It is warm, protection, and praise the gods of democracy. There it is, the 1810. This is what we want. We're going to go for an outpost right here. The only thing that I'm worried about is all of those Babylonian scouts that had been in the area. Thankfully, we killed one of them, so hopefully that kind of Got them off our back for a while. Ooh, this is going to get really expensive. I think the reason this is so expensive is because this region is actually considered removed from any of our cities. Can't do it. We'll probably do better just to keep on exploring for a while now. Yeah, we have confetti even in the ancient era. I love just it. Yelling I absolutely love it. Okay, we probably want to be able to get a little bit more influence rolling right now get the influence going then the production quarter is here which will lead to pyramids out here and then we can get more production be able to bring the mountains online and then this area might also be farmed who knows and there we are our next settlement our next outpost three turns and it will be produced the time it takes to establish an outpost depends on the production available in the surrounding area. Is this our way up? Yes, we can begin finally exploring what is over here. It looks like it falls off a cliff. I don't know how true that is in terms of elevation. I think it's just showing that like we are on a very high plateau out here. I don't want to run these guys too far away, but maybe just joining them together so that if they get... Uh, ambushed by any other enemy scouts they will not be completely helpless could be a good idea they're not going to do too much if the babylonians come at us or these charioteers come at us oh no so there are some um mercenary factions you know neutral neutral enemies here so there are two charioteers just coming to stir up trouble they are not usually too aggressive in terms of hitting your buildings, but if they were to attack any of these, they would just wipe us out. So getting some early military units is definitely going to be 
important for us. Let's keep on going along here and see kind of the scope of the Babylonians' influence. Hmm. The Babylonians have decided to try and trespass on our lands. And they are also trespassing. They're coming at us over here. Okay. Okay. Well, time to research carpentry to be able to get archers. And in the meantime, time to play smart. Mm -hmm. You know what? I bid you greetings. In the they are hesitant towards us. So there's a number of different factors. There's a number of different factors that is going to impact how the AI feels about you. They have these archetypes, so cool-headed and forgiving, which seems to natural like imply that these guys are going to be more friendly. And then they are good at gaining money, and they are a merchant prince. So this guy makes tons and tons of money as being the Midas character, and he is biased to luxuries. He wants to be able to get all of the luxury resources. It's kind of like his, his downfall. Question is, would he sign a non-aggression pact with us? Oh, mm. Don't you think? He would agree now, if we so pay lovely. him 25 coins. Hmm. Is that worth it? So I see. I mean, right now we we don't really want conflict with them. We have taken the forward settlement away from them anyway. And I mean, okay, well we don't have enough money. <laughs> don't have enough money to be able to do it anyway. All right, let's back up a little bit. And let's try and join our units. Come over here. If it comes to fighting. I have to refuse. I'm because sorry. you asked more than but I have in the bank account. I am that poor. Some of us have not been in the ancient era as long as you, Mr. Babylon. We'll run our guys across here. And this will be the joining of... The army. We'll call this uh, Defense False One. Something boring. You can rename pretty much everything. So I think we're going to leave the capital city as Memphis. Let me know in the comments names for armies and also names for additional cities. Otherwise, they're just going to end up being descriptive names of where they are on the map <laughs> so that I can keep track of them much better than like trying to say Situla or Archid over and over again. Was there an enemy over here? They're saying that there's an enemy over here. All right, Babylon. You asked too much, so now we will make you pay. I mean, uh, with this kind of balance of power, an instant resolution would probably get us through it without any casualties, but I really don't want to trade one for one here. So we're gonna do the manual battle and then play it out pretty quick here to be able to try and uh, gain victory. As the attacker, we do get to strike first. Mooch is much more beneficial if you are bringing archers, which we are not. Okay. Come over here. We'll come up here. Where has he deployed to? Oh, he didn't even want to guard his flag. Well, that's very interesting, actually. It does let him have this good attack, though. All right, I'll back up. He has to come down to be able to retake the flag, and then we can attack him with the high ground advantage. We're also keeping our units together because that gives them um, a plus one strength for adjacent units. So there, he did pretty much what I wanted. And this goes even for us. Unfortunately, we have to be standing on this this river, which is hurting our combat effectiveness pretty significantly. Over here, though, we're able to hit hard. Okay, let's wear him down. He's not going to be as uh, dangerous once he is injured. And that is all the turns we are able to take until pass over into the next turn. Okay. 
And this is the magnificent... What? Why are you not valid? You were showing me a, a preview just a second ago. No. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. Somebody else has staked their claim on this territory? Is it showing me like a little border? Is this the Babylonians though? Or is it somebody else? Hmm. Well, now we will have to burn down the Babylonians outpost to be able to establish our own. How tiresome. Yep, the territory is already claimed. Okay. All right. We want to wait here to be able to regain health and then we can go out and see if we can potentially ransack whatever the Babylonians are building. There is the call for our new archers. Here come more Babylonian scouts wandering right into our territory. We'll keep an eye on them, but not force the issue just yet because we are healing up and we would prefer it if they're, they were stuck standing on the rivers. We'll wait to heal. Empire Foundation, we have a new civic option. So this is the cultural um, mechanics within the game is that you get um, this whole web of decisions based on all these different categories. And so our founding myths. Are we going to be founded on natural right or divine mandate? Do we want additional influence on the main plaza? Or do we want additional faith on the territory? So founding a religion is good. Um, I have never had too much trouble just, you know, getting my, my religion going. And so I prefer getting the influence on the main plaza. Also, progress is going to give us additional science production rather than um, pure stability that you go for with uh, tradition here. So we're going to go ahead and enact natural Why life. was this key question? Here with legitimacy, we can also make a decision that will give us um, cheaper cost to create outposts, or we can go for cheaper attachment and city absorption. In the early game, cheaper outpost creation is better, and you can ultimately switch this over into codified laws. <clears throat> because these bonuses are gonna be more beneficial later on in the game when kind of all the territories in the world that are seems to leave a lot up. of interpretation. Our unique unit is calling our name, but at the same time, well, maybe we go for domestication here. We might divert into city defense to be able to get up warriors. Um, let's see what the Babylonians do with their unit here. They've taken a bold step forward. If we, if we attack them here, they are really hemmed in, but their flag is never placed on a, flag is never placed on a river. Hmm. We'll hit them like this. I want to beat them back. We will again go for the manual battle, deploy our oh, units next way. to each other, and in deployment. They have, of course, taken up space off the river. Hmm. I wonder if we choose to back up if they will advance or not. If they don't, I mean, that's okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, we'll go back and just see if we can kind of bait them out. See what the AI is going to do. Up, oh, they just sit and defend. Makes sense. Okay. I think we can still break them here, though. I move them together to keep the adjacency bonus going, and between the two of us, we should be all right. Oh, they're holding up pretty well. Rough. All right, hold up. Now, unfortunately, it seems like they have connected this territory with a city of theirs. That means that a Maybe it's just because we don't see the border right now? I don't know, it looks different. It's not as dark. Okay, back into the battle. Uh, they're not interested in coming out, and I'm not interested in attacking them. They've gotten a combat veterancy, which has also improved their, um, their unit's combat strength, so we just kind of pass the rest of these rounds. 
There we go. We were defeated. And then our units retreated all the way over here. I was like, they were destroyed? What happened to them? But no, they are just hanging out over here. Time to round out the army with some archers and then go onto the warpath, I believe. Once our guys are able to heal up, I'm on it. we'll move them all the way into the city. Keep them, keep them protected for now. Honestly, attaching here feels desirable. So we can go to the city here, and then you can attach this adjacent area. That'll give us a boost in population and access to all of the resources within this map zone. But it will also decrease the stability of our city. And when your stability reaches too low, you deal with riots. And so you, you need to be able to balance keeping your people happy and stable with being able to expand. I do, I do want to attach, though. Our capital has a bonus on stability, and so here we'll drop to 90%, but that's fine. We don't have access to horses yet, so we're going to wait on getting our elite unit and then go for irrigation and then pick up city defense. We do have access to bronze, so bronze working can be beneficial for us here. The walking wounded. We can glorify our wounded to gain stability or we can exploit them. Uh, this is the perfect time to exploit them actually as we are producing more units. Your choices there also change your civic alignment. So if we go here, show civics, is it here? Where does it show our alignments? I guess it's only on the decisions. Maybe I have to go to, I'm gonna do it guys. Here we go, this alignment. I wish I would just show you this, but your decisions and all of those smaller factors will swing you on the different axes. And the, uh, the position on all of those different axes is actually meaningful in terms of bonuses that you get for your empire. We get to found our religion. We can either be founded on polytheism to be able to get additional faith per number of attached territories, or we can go with shamanism and get faith per population. I prefer shamanism because I like having cities with really big population rather than the kind of wide empires. So we're gonna found our religion here. Excellent, excellent. And once we have gotten enough followers and produced enough religion, we will be able to gain extra tenants and bonuses from this religion and then start building holy sites. And holy sites give you stability. So it is a uh, beautiful synergy indeed. Uh, we got our first archer. So I do think it is time to advance, find those stinking Babylonians who keep on sneaking around here. And especially the ones who forward settled us. Exactly what we did to them. How could they? Oh, it has become a neutral, a neutral city. Amazing. And now you've met the Mycenaeans. The populations go well. Their thoughts are rather formidable. And we met the Mycenaeans. Let us see here. Enchanted. The Mycenaeans salute you. Let us introduce ourselves. They are careful and introverted. They are strong, um, defending their cities, and. They are expansionist. Hmm, and they want to create strong defenses along their borders. This is a terrifying combination that they gain the extra defensive strength, and then they are trying to build these defenses. All right, well, they are condescending towards us because <laughs> they've scored 347 points, and we have scored 20. We are in, we're in dead last right now, guys. But that, that is all going to change. It's going to change at some point likely with how we handle this neutral city. I kind of want to conquer it. I don't necessarily agree with their city placement, putting it all the way up there. Um, I want it to found down here, but I do want access to these horses. I for sure want access to the horses. So you can kind of negotiate with these guys. You can spend influence or money to be able to um, strengthen your alliance with them and then ultimately you can graft them into your empire and they will become one of your cities peacefully. Or you can just go to war and then conquer them. 
just much, much faster. Not as messy, but uh, they do have chariots and archers here and more chariots to defend themselves with. So they're pretty well defended right now. Maybe we will need to go for a peaceful route. Okay, we will increase our patronage level. And then, hmm, do we want to bribe them as well? What good is money if you don't spend it? So every single turn, we're going to be gaining favor. And then once we reach the higher levels, you can then start assimilation once you are considered the patron of the city. We've gotten enough influence here to be able to start a, an additional city here in Citrula. Uh, it would be in an interesting position to attach to Memphis, but I think that we do want to start this one. It was in a great starting set of hexes. It has these strategic resources that'll be better for the late game, whatever they are. Hopefully they're not only available like super late in the game that they come in kind of soonish to help us out. We will go ahead and involve. We get Thebes. Um, not Thebes. We will call you. Uh, Coast Guard. Because you are built on the coast. And what building does Coast Guard want to build? Probably there to be able to get some additional. Yeah, the pottery workshop would be nice. Okay. Hmm. My Sinians went over for that curio. Hopefully I'm able to pick up this curio. <laughs> there we go, and we got irrigation. And we got actually a scientist star. Are you guys standing on the curio? They're standing on the curio, guys. Standing right on it. Now this city, we are not trying to convert. We can be, uh, we can attack them. So you see here, they're violent. These ones with the little peace symbol are, are peaceful. So this warm-up battle could be good for giving us some extra fame. I'm, I'm ready to test out my warriors. Though right now we're just going to uh, pass. I want the curio and I don't want to attack them from lower ground. Hmm, they decided to just sit on it. Well, that's disappointing. Wait. This is an additional city now? It is. It was just founded as a new city. Okay, so we have three neutral cities. The, the, the tri-cities. Sus, Akkad, and Avaris. Incredible. These guys are also peaceful. Oh, no, no, no. That was considered part of the city? I wanted to attack the other guys. I didn't want to attack the city. Now we're here trying to conquer this city that I don't want. Uh, it says I can win, though. I think I just abandon it. That'll make me retreat, though. And now I have to fight? Who's Who's attacking me? All right, I guess fair enough. I accidentally declared war on your city and then broke it off and now you're coming out of the gates to fight me. Let's fight. I am the defender though. They do have to come to me. They're gonna have to stand on the river, get pelted by my archers. It's not gonna go well for them. I don't care if your units are warriors and mine are just scouts.
Brilliant. Now that they walked out of the gates and all died, I could just attack the city. Is this like, is this my opportunity? Let's go! We'll take it. We'll take Akkad. And now we have, I built this city because I didn't uh, think I was going to be expanding soon. Now we have three cities. So your city limit is up here in the corner. You have a city cap. I control one more than the two that you can simultaneously administer and your empire is suffering a penalty of 10 influence per turn. So we could choose to just destroy this one. We could choose to turn it into a outpost um, or we could hang on to it suffering the penalty. I think for now I will suffer the penalty. And Coast Guard is wondering what it should build. Um, its stability is improving. I think that we should get out our, um, our fantastic pyramids while we can. Because once we advance to the next era, we will no longer be able to build the pyramids. And then here in, yep. There's nobody living here. Zero population. Let's build this uh, farm district. They have refined the luxury resource, which that's, I mean, at least they did that for us, right? The capture of the great city of Akkad was a proud day for your empire. Marching through its gates, however, it was clear the defeated citizens were equally proud of their own colorful culture. What do you make of their customs and rights? We can gain stability, which I, I do like getting the extra stability rather than the extra um, influence. The real bummer is that I want these horses. Can I trade with Sus? Is there an option to trade with them? There's not. You're telling me there's not? I suppose not. Okay, well. Bronze working, it is. Hmm. Or writing, actually. We're gonna go for writing first because the game has a system called competitive deeds. And so the uh, first to be able to do different important things in the game is able to get bonus points. Uh, discover writing's already, is that already taken? It's taken off. Somebody that I don't know has already gotten writing. Okay. In that case, change of plans. We don't care about writing. If we're not going to be the first. Why bother? We'll take that off. We'll go bronze working. Mm, these guys are really asking for it. But I would prefer to heal. The Descendant of Kings! We can gain stability on our capital. We can make more money at the cost of science, or we can have our units move faster. Uh, we can move toward collectivism, or we can move toward world versus tradition. I'm gonna go here. The little has a chance of unexpected, unexpected consequences. Translation, bad things will happen. Fate of the free cities. Well, I think we've already determined the fate of the free cities. They will all fall to the Egyptian empire. They will all fall. Oh, I can make the assimilation cheaper? They may cheaper? have more to offer than just yes, their weapons. Assimilation yes. does seem practical. All right, we're about to be able to assimilate once we get enough influence. Influence, which is significantly bottlenecked because of this. I don't know, maybe we don't keep Akkad. Maybe we just turn Akkad into an outpost, because I want this to be a city anyway. And if we're going to absorb that one, it's the one that's growing. Yeah.
I don't think I like this. Our enemies have found a way to be able to use reinforcements. So they got two bands of warriors from the adjacent city. That tech is like way beyond what we were able to use right now. So, not fun. Not fun and not fair. Now we're gonna lose units. Oh, I hate how messy this just became. Well, these guys are gonna go down, but they'll go down fighting. These ones might as well use use the high ground advantage. Incredible, they're not dead. Yes, let's go. Uh, do I try and save my units or do I retreat? Like, I could push forward for a faster end of the combat. I'm guaranteed to destroy their unit. I could also try and finagle it where the scouts live at the cost of more health on my archers. Ah, uh, they still finished that one off, okay. Fair enough. They did it at the cost of their own units. We gain the Militarist Star. So if we look at our options here, you have all these different categories where you earn stars. At seven, you're able to advance into the next age. We've gotten three. This is where we can track all of our legacy traits, our current bonuses, and then because we are a builder-focused sieve, we gain extra fame for reaching these stars here as the builders. And we have gotten a point for agrarian, meaning our population has expanded. We've gotten a point for militarist because we've been doing all these senseless, senseless wars against the free cities. And then we've gotten scientist stars actually for being doing all the research that we've been doing. We're close to expansion as star. We're slow here, we're slow here. Um, we should really start getting these builder stars soon. We're just one district away from being able to pick up a builder star. So that will come with time. Memphis, you need irrigation, but you also need a pyramid. I want the pyramid. Let's see, plus seven, plus 11. Yeah, right there. The game recommends, and then sometimes a little tooltip, like gets in the way of being able to visualize where things you're putting down are going to go, which I find annoying, but it's a small complaint. Coast Guard needs to be able to improve its stability, so I think the public fountain is the way to go. Alright, let's finish these guys. And let's retreat the scouts, keep the scouts alive! We'll come over here because that gives us better advantage from high ground. You see there, plus four damage from high ground. Pretty significant for your archers. Especially when their combat strength is so low anyway. And then we'll come around here. Be able to shoot at them again. Animal magic. Well, we have to go with cats, right? We are the Egyptians. We believe that the cats are gods. So there we go. Now, there are a number of things. I mean, yeah, it's got it's got our unique unit just glowing and flashing to taunt us because we don't have horses. We have a grievance available. Today? Interesting. The Babylonians have taken over this neighboring area. Well, we're, we're too busy wrapped up in the conflicts with the free cities. If we can nab up these lands, then I think we're going to feel pretty good, even if the Babylonians take up the additional space. We got our Builder Star, and now... We are not yet the patron. Oh, here's resources and trade. Yes, yes, we can get horses from them. Okay, so we can buy horses from them. 
until we decide that we want to assimilate the city. Fantastic. Why am I not considered the patron, though? Do I have to be here? Oh, I'm at 89. It just shows that I'm going to grow into being the patron in a little bit. Okay. Makes sense now. There was a curiosity off on this side. Is it still there? Oh, there it is. I want this. A game of prophecy. Hmm. I don't want... I don't want Memphis to be defiant and lose stability. I don't want it to be superstitious and lose science. And I don't particularly want to spend money. Hmm. This will move us toward authority. Move us toward liberty. Move us toward tradition. All very minor things. I suppose I take that one. Alright. You've taken my money. A new wonder can be claimed. All right, so, uh, yep, yep, acknowledge. The hanging gardens have already been taken, but the Pyramid of Giza is available. I mean, it's a perfect fit, right? Is it just too on the nose to play the Egyptians and then pick up the Pyramid of Giza? Must be placed next to the river, can be built once in the world. Um, and where is it? 20 stability, minus 25% on district industry cost. Stacking with the Egyptians already present 10 percent district industry reduction meaning that all our districts for the rest of the game would be at minus 20 minus 35 percent cost fantastic temple of artemis being able to give you so they always will give you stability and fame but then some of them will also count as uh faith and holy sites and then they'll give you some other special effect so here we get on capital extra food um, of anybody following our religion and extra stability from Stonehenge. Temple of Artemis. Your units ignore movement penalties from forests. Just all of them. I think we take the Pyramid of Giza. We're going to stack this. We're going to claim it. There we go. Claim this wonder. That costs us a lot of influence. So we are behind on being able to integrate sus. Assimilate sus. Uh, we'll make it eventually. We gain the wheel. And we gain another scientist star. And we gain an influence star. Amazing. These guys can be upgraded? Oh, the archers can be upgraded to the chariots! That's so cool. Okay, open the tech tree. What else do we want? Hmm... Masonry, fishing, probably just picking up the cheap ones, right? They build into other important things eventually. There we go. Masonry and fishing. Hmm. They do belong to sus, though. I don't want to attack them if they belong to sus, because I believe once I integrate them, I will be in command of all those units. Positioning us very well for a classical era warfaring bent against one of our other neighbors if we take over an additional six, potentially, additional six military units. We can conquer this as well. I think we're going to kind of troll for trouble over here. If a transition seems awkward there, it's because a misclick resulted in erasing all of the patron progress that we had made over here with Sus. Um, and things have now played out a little bit differently. An army that was attacking us over here became twice as powerful, so we ran away. <laughs> the cowards we are! <laughs> and here we go. 
Things change. Illegal and empires. Mm -hmm. I don't want to play this game. Okay, let's go now. As much as Akkad has been nice to have the additional city, we did come into possession of it by accident uh, with their defenders overzealously charging out of the, the city to be able to attack us. So the way that you remove cities that you do not want is you have to ransack them. I would like to ransack this, convert this, and then build a... Um, outpost over here the thing is my budget of influence is very tight so i think the order is i need to wait, we'll wait have enough influence to be able to establish my new own outpost immediately and we got another star beautiful we got a uh, merchant star well we've picked up stars just all over the place let's close this we got like one of everything except for expansionist we're actually far off of the builder star that we were kind of expecting. Wow. Well, the ancient era draws to a close. We have expanded to uh, Memphis, founded Coast Guard, were wanted to found an outpost over here, but discovered that there was already a free city in control of the region. And then this whole valley became three free cities altogether. We came into possession of this one, which we want to get rid of because we don't really fancy it's ground like there's no strategic resources. It was not on particularly good tiles. We want this, we want sus along the river and with the horses. We want that to be our city and then this will be like a feeder into it. And then we'll figure out what we want to do with Avaris who is kind of hostile, probably a military conquest of some type. In terms of pacing of the game, it looks like four of the factions are all advancing at the same time here and we are within that pack our score is put back significantly compared to the leaders but we can always be able to make gains on them advancing to the classical era we have a whole slew of brand new cultures to be able to choose from now you can choose to transcend your existing culture and what that means is that you get an additional 10 percent bonus of fame for the uh, specifically builder stars. So any builder stars that you earn for the rest of the game will give you an additional 10% fame. This is very useful if you are like set on a, a very focused um, sieve, but it does mean that you are missing out on potentially a new legacy trait and then the new, all, all of the new options. It does mean that you get to keep around your district building and your unique unit, obviously. Um, but out of all these other options, there is one that is calling out to me, and it is the Persians here, giving us an additional plus two city cap. Getting that city cap up can be pretty hard in the early game, and so picking these up, especially when we are in a position to be able to capitalize on like knocking over all these little free cities, and then we can just kind of add them and and hold them for now until we are able to absorb cities later on as we want to expand and make larger metropolises. The Immortals is also a fine unit. We do have access to copper, so we would be able to start building those. And then the Palace, the Satrap's Palace, honestly doesn't look that interesting to me because <laughs> it is investing into uh, market quarters, and usually that's not something that I do super early in the game. Um, but the rest of the bonuses that we are getting, and especially this legacy trait that's going to stay with us forever, seems, seems to be what I am about. We are going to lock the Persians in. Hope you guys are enjoying the episodes and that I get to see you guys as we continue on into the classical era. Now to hand you off to this sweet, sweet animation. As urban centers grow, both ideas and sewage are generated at a record pace. Arts and sciences flourish as military tactics and mathematical equations become as coveted as physical goods. Empires struggled to control these intangibles, however, as some might trouble their stability. <laughs> 